So Dr. Mann, when you first began doing surgery, what was your initial passion? What brought you into the world of plastic surgery in particular? Being an Israeli and finishing the university in Tel Aviv and coming and doing residency in Montefiore in New York and then University of Louisville and then in Boca Raton in 1980, I thought that it is important to deliver a good quality of work and to make people look natural with better and expectations that will be getting better in time of myself because nothing is ideal as you know when we want to improve our appearance and we look at it every day in the mirror and we say well maybe it's time to do something i wanted to make sure that things look better and get better in time and safer so it was important to have uh, not only board certification, but also to bring along a board certified anesthesiologist um, and to do procedures that are safe under local anesthesia, and also to develop not only good surgical procedure, also non surgical procedure. And today we're going to talk about a few of them, such as uh, we're going to uh, bring up soon. I know, we're so excited for that, Dr. Mann, because we know you've been really, uh, you've been a pioneer in so many ways in that particular area. And if I could just address this, you had mentioned in a discussion we had had before, I, I guess there's more requests from my generation for more minimally invasive procedures or ones with a little less downtime than what used to be traditionally thought of maybe like with the facelift people would think oh i have to go hide somewhere in south america for six months till i can get back to boca raton but it's not like that anymore correct there, there's more and more requests especially nowadays that we are sitting at home and watching tv and we know uh, that we go out and it's, it's, it's actually, we have to distance ourselves from other people. So the return to uh, improvement, self-improvement, whether we do at home, is uh, also think about what we can do that doesn't involve a lot of cutting. It, are there things that uh, get us to look better? And uh, we're gonna talk about this as we go along. One of the things, that uh, I'm going to mention is doing a facelift without cutting. So we're going to talk about this also today. Awesome. D Doug, I've always wanted to ask you, uh, and I'm sure everyone else is thinking the same, when you go into a store and you go to checkout, you see these magazines with the, on the cover are celebrities that we knew and loved, and they've had some work done, and it just doesn't look natural. Does does that bother you? I mean, it, it must, because I know that there's things you can do that would minimize that. Well, you know that uh, people go to people that they think uh, will help them, but it's not always that they go to the people that w they wanted to go to at the end of, of the day. They, they went to somebody who was recommended and they had some things done, but in most of the situations, people get very good results. They go to a board certified plastic surgeon, they don't cut corners and they get very good results. We just have to be careful about the going to things that don't work well or to minimize problems. Complications can occur in, in many areas, but we want in most of them to be successful. And don't look for these unusual magic or shortcuts. If you read on something like Groupon that you can, let's say a filler would cost a, uh, somewhere between 500 to $700, it would be ridiculous to look for Groupon for somebody who sells it for $50, right? Exactly. So, so that's one of the advice. The other one, look for a good support that the uh, doctor has. Uh, talk to other patients who had it done. Ask to look for some photos, uh, check qualification. Yeah. And so, and you were mentioning too, 
to be a board certified plastic surgeon. So for those who don't know, are they all board certified or that are doing procedures or, or no? No, not all of them are board certified and some of them are self distinguished uh, boards. They're not like uh, approved by the American Medical Association. So it would be a good idea to look for a board certified plastic surgeon who goes through written exams, verbal uh, exams, and has done seven years of residency. So no shortcuts, really good thing. And then I'm gonna ask you one more question before we get into your PowerPoint too, because so many, the ones that are here um, that are MLD therapists, Dr. Mann, even though they're from all around the country, um, what they've seen when someone's had surgery is they come to them for the lymphatic drainage post-op. Um, and it could be as far away as New Jersey or any other state because they come to Miami a lot of times. The patients go to Miami and have the procedure done and then they go back home, they fly home, they still have drains in them and sutures. And some of the therapists were told to pull the drains and that, that was not something that was in their scope of practice to do. Um, and again, alluding back to what you're saying, are the folks that are having these things done, are they being done by someone who's board certified and all of that? How could we help protect maybe the therapist or what should they ask? Good, these are uh, good questions, but you start with a difficult one, such as removal of drain. But, uh, and, and I'm gonna uh, say, I'll start with the last one and saying, uh, drains should not stay uh, underneath the skin too long of a time and uh, usually should be removed by somebody who has practice and, and knows how to do this. But I think at the end of the day, you're always going to be smart by calling somebody like Lisa or, or your friend and, and, and checking out with other friends who uh, you would uh, value their opinion and say, you know what, maybe you should ask for more opinion before you go uh, with this step. So I think you're right. Go, your uh, sixth sense is uh, very important. Do things that you are learning. And since you are... Uh, asking me what uh, my opinion about different things. I, I see you here in the Zoom and I really uh, appreciate that you're coming from such an experience of manual lymphatic drainage. And, and, some, and I had a few of you ask me questions. Is it okay to massage or uh, manual lymphatic drainage the face when the patient has Botox or fillers? And when is it safe to begin the massage of the face after these procedure, one week or two weeks. First of all, Botox and fillers are different. Usually, um, Botox um, will um, be injected and uh, you start seeing the results in about a week to 10 days. And, and the fillers, they are injected as well and you start seeing the results either immediately or maybe um, a few days later and a few months later the Botox will last for about three, maybe sometimes uh, four months. The fillers, depends on which we're talking about, some of them will last a year, some of them two and a half years. So those are totally different things. Uh, the Botox is done to decrease the uh, pulse that goes from the nerves into the muscle. So we want to decrease the lines that's FDA approved for like forehead lines, but we use it as an off label in many parts of the face. So you don't wanna do the massage immediately uh, after the Botox for fear maybe that you're gonna push the Botox into a different uh, place that it was supposed to be placed in. But I think mild massage is fine. It's not a problem at all. And, and who would know better than people who do MLD that the mild, lymphatic drainage is excellent. So it, it's not a problem to do it a few hours later. Uh, so not laying with the face down would be one of the instructions because of the fear that maybe some of the material can go to a, a, a different place that it was intended. When we talk about fillers, it's a different story because the fillers, when they're injected, sometimes they do cause a little bit what? 
irregularities, right? Yes. Irregularities. There is no, I don't remember a patient that I didn't inject, that I didn't do massage. And I didn't go to your school to do MLD, but I know that a patient cannot leave the place uh, where the uh, fillers have been done without some kind of massage. And you'd be very wise to do a massage to the area of the face or other parts of the body, mild or a little bit more vigorous. There's nothing wrong with this. It, it just even if there's some irregularities, they'll go away in time, but the massage will help it. So I, I think there's nothing wrong with this. Um, is, that, is that okay with you guys? It, um, Dr. Mann, should they do the massage before the injections or should they do them after? Both. They should do before to get a, a better lymphatic drainage. And, and, and I, I find that... Um, that fillers sometimes the problem is that they they cause some swelling so so maybe localized swelling maybe even venous uh, occlusion slightly or lymphatic drainage um, is needed to get better results so beforehand would be good and afterwards as well so i i did think that i covered the difference between botox and fillers um, and, and, and that, uh, some more questions, please, about that. Um, we have a question here from Marianne, and she's asking, do you have your own skincare line? She's interested as an esthetician to incorporate it in her MLD treatments. Yes, we, we do have, uh, skin is, is, is so important. It's, it's the largest organ we have that we own and the sun damage, and brown pigmentation, and, and large pores, um, and, and the redness, that's rosacea, uh, melasma, we talked about it, brown pigmentation. These are um, things that bother the patients, so we do use, depends on the situation, whatever they need, and we're, we're gonna show some example of what we use for patients who need skin care. Uh, so we're going to talk about this as well. Um, are there ways to tighten up the skin without uh, doing a traditional facelift? So I'm, I'm going to go to some um, presentation here and um, I'm going to here that I prepared. Can you see that? Can you see the presentation? Mm, uh, no, not yet. Not yet. Okay. Hold on. So guys, if you want to, while Dr. Mann is preparing the presentation, if you want to write in your chat bar some questions that you're having about MLD and some of these procedures, feel free to do so, because I know he'll be answering some questions here shortly. I wanted to share with you, share screen. Mm -hmm. There we go. We see. Oh, wow. Yes, I see photos. Okay. So we're going to go to this one. Can you see some? We see the file. Oh, hold on. Uh, can, can, you, can you see? Did you share the folder? I did. Can you see that? 
Um, we still see the file right now. New share. That is a new share. It's a new share. No, no. Yeah, yeah. Can you see that? We see it. Zoom Beauty Seminar. Yes. Okay. So that's it. Beautiful. Here. Thank you. So uh, I wanted to talk about a topic that has to do with nothing cutting, but it uh, it it's using uh, the um, non-surgical uh, methods of radio frequency and skin tightening and the creams, the skincare that, that I just briefly mentioned and the laser and microneedling, a special one, um, multiple microneedles and skin elevation or skin tightening with Agnes. Have you heard of Agnes? No. So we're going to show you a little bit about this. The first thing as you see, the machine on the left side is Agnes machine. That machine at, was initially uh, built in South Korea and brought over two years ago uh, for uh, overcoming acne, blackheads, and, and then they found out that it works on wrinkling and then fat, also fat to the lower eyelids and the jowls and the double chin. And then there was another machine that um, was very helpful, is that's the Neogen, that's radio frequency and nitrogen that works on sun damage, fine lines and wrinkles and large pores. Now that we mention these two machines that are so important, they work very well for tightening the skin and lifting the skin. When we add to it the laser in a low setting, uh, the CO2 laser, we can overcome fine lines, discoloration of the skin and scarring. And then we add the microneedling. It works on improving the collagen, the skin tone, and you do see immediate results. They all work together. So the sum of these different machines is much greater than if you use them singly one by itself. Now, Lisa, you asked me about the cream. I do find that a lot of people are suffering from aging skin, fine lines, breakout, sun damage, redness, and melasma. And I find out that this cream does help the patients quite a bit. There's a skin treatment that we do two weeks apart twice. And all they do is use uh, a, um, a pea-sized cream once a day in the morning and the skin gets better. We do also have another machine, carboxytherapy, that's CO2 underneath the skin. And when you inject CO2 underneath the skin, there's a message for the body to bring more oxygen. How, do they, how does that happen? By improving the blood supply. So now let's talk a little bit about the, these machines, how they actually work. You can see here, can you see how the needle is going through the skin? Yes. And, and, and what it does, uh, it, it, it tightens up the muscle, uh, first of all, by using those three little needles that go in to tighten up the muscles. But also a single needle will go in into the fat compartment like you have in the lower eyelid and also in the jaws and non-surgically will reduce it. So you get better results there. And so here uh, you can see the needle in the fat when it's being put in, unlike cautery, it causes a contraction of the fat without creating a lot of heat around it. And that's very good. And that's what we want to decrease the fat without causing damage around it. That is amazing, Dr. Mann. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm stepping in on the presentation just for a moment. Sure. Because that was a, a concern, and, and a lot of people ask me about your procedures. How do you do this and keep it minimally invasive and not do damage to the lymph system? But we know that if you're doing it that way as opposed to some of the more aggressive methods, which go in deeply and actually can melt some lymph vessels in the process. Um, so the, the 
There you have it. The results speak for themselves. Why? I, there's a reason for it. And, and uh, the Dr. Han, who invented this machine, uh, put a, 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 a special protection on the tip of the needle so it penetrates and causes the change in the area where the tip of the needle is, but not around it. So it does work very well, uh, that Agnes, in tightening the fat uh, and the skin around it. And what he found out that if you put the needle in the 45 degrees, instead, like writing in a pen, you write it usually in 90 degree or 60, 60 degree, but if you use that needle in 45 degrees to the skin, you get also some skin tightening at the same time. So here's some example of fat reduction and some skin tightening. Do you see that? Absolutely. And, and here are uh, some examples of three treatments uh, by using uh, the uh, Neogen. The Neogen, I mentioned before, ready frequency and skin tightening. Uh, so that works very well. Nitrogen and ready frequency improves the skin. So now if you use Agnes, uh, the single needle, and then use the Neogen as well, you get a more improvement of the surface of the skin and tightening at the same time. So it's not far from the thought of, well, can I do it instead of doing a facelift? Yes, you can. It's not gonna be the same, but it's, it's gonna get you quite a bit of improvement that otherwise you're not gonna see. Here's what, um, the Neogen would do in high setting. Remember nitrogen and ready frequency to tighten up wrinkling around the mouth. That can be done and can be done at the local. You don't need to be asleep for that. Amazing. Some more improvement of Neogen around the eyes and uh, around the cheek area. And look what Neogen does. Uh, you could use that together with fillers like your own fat. And you could do Agnes as well. And look at the improvement of the surface of the skin. Deep wrinkles with deep setting. And our patients who have dark skin also can benefit from this. So you can see how the cheekbones are a little bit more raised on this picture here compared to what it was before and tighten up because of the Agnes. And uh, lower eyelids can be improved. And you can see the fat underneath the cheekbone, um, the jowls and underneath the chin is improved with the Agnes. And especially the lines around the mouth can be improved. And I believe so much in this that this is a picture of me in 2013. And you can see the aging that has started occurring way before but showed in 2013 and you see some skin tightening and adding the agnes to it and the laser and the dmnd remember the skin treatment that i told you that helps very well and and the staff did it on me uh, as a matter of fact um one of the staff members renzo is here as well right renzo very excellent job lorenzo oh my word so you could see some improvement with the Agnes. Uh, so you could see um, the sagging of the neck and the face and the skin tightening non-surgically with the Agnes. And uh, look what this patient who had sagging of the mid face, lower face, didn't want to do cutting procedure. And uh, look what she says. Can you hear? Yes. I had this question to done because it's my, my birthday is coming up and I thought I would like to look younger instead of older on my birthday. Um, I had a really interesting group of procedures all at one time. And uh, specifically, it's uh, microneedling, Agnes, Carboxy, laser, Neogen, um, and a little bit of Botox and, and probably a few other things. The, what, what I found fascinating about the procedure is that they, they do all of that step by step. Oh, with the DMMD, that was at the end. So they do all of these things. There's downtime in between, you relax, they numb you up. 
So uh, some of the procedures are extremely comfortable, you don't feel a thing. Others sting maybe a little, you know, because they are injections, but it only stings for like a second. So the bottom line is that um, after about an hour and a half or so, we were done. And as soon as it's finished, you're fine. I was fine. I drove myself home, made myself dinner. Um, I'm fine. So this was how I look and it's been two weeks since I had all of this done. Um, and I, I, the, the other great part about all these procedures is the, the improvement that you see in your face is right away. In fact, Dr. Mann did something kind of funny. He did like half the face. And you know, you look at it, you're like, oh my gosh, it's like the old me and the new me. It's like, hurry up and do the other half. So anyway, <laughs> it's kind of fascinating to see that on your own face. So a uh, big improvement, big improvement. Um, the kind, not that I've had a facelift, but I think as long as this kind of options are available, I don't even know if you need so much a facelift because you can get the, the same results, but they look better. You don't have to worry about cutting or scarring or anything else, um, which is wonderful. So yes, I very much uh, like to recommend Dr. Mann and his staff. They're all very wonderful people. They're very caring, they're very knowledgeable. And um, I, you know, people see different things. So I, I wanted to mention that as well as uh, telling you that, um, Painting is part of my life. It just gives me an opportunity to show people what I feel about art and science because it's a combination of art and science. And sometimes I would paint, um, that's oil painting that I did. And I, I wanted to bring, uh, do I, how long do we have if I bring another topic or is it uh, um, time to? Oh, oh, you have more time, Dr. Mann. We're enjoying everything you're sharing. Okay, so I, I wanted to bring some examples. You wanted to know what's different in, in, in the facelift sometimes that we do uh, for patients. So I want to show you what, can you see that? Yes, I yes. see the face before and after. So, so sometimes this is, shortly after where the incision is made inside the ear and sometimes, um, oh, okay, I, I ran away, I ran away, wait a minute, uh, let me share, uh, here. Sorry, the desk. There we go. Do you see the picture here? Yes. Okay, so, so what I do different, you asked me about um, procedures. Uh, sometimes I make the incision inside, instead of making the line in here in the front that is very visible, I'll make the incision at the edge of the ear and bring it down in the back and do also the fat reduction and the plasma work and the fat injection. Is that clear? It is. In fact, uh, just to refresh their minds, Dr. Mann, that was something when we talk about the head, neck, and face lymph lift that we do in our class that distinguishes you very different. I said, you know, if we've ever seen anyone when we went back to our high school reunion and we wondered if they had any work done, all we had to do was either look in front or behind their ear because that was typically where the sutures were placed. But at the same time, that was where the main drains for the lymph nodes were. And in your particular procedure, it's very interesting that you do it inside the ear. So even a woman like me, we could wear our hair up right. and no one would see those, those terrible scars that would typically signal that yeah you've had some work done and, and it's just lovely it looks so natural well here in this case i think for mld is is important that that you do have the patient and you can do some lymphatic drainage and help them to uh, recover faster afterwards and and the uh healing will be better for them once um uh, all the swelling is coming down so you have a very important role to do it the way you do it to help our patients. I'll give you a couple more examples uh, of patients um, that uh, 
you could see uh, side view again where you could try to hide the incision so it's not that visible wow look at that what a difference she just she looks like she's lost 15 years just amazing amazing so you had also had a question and what is a good candidate for these procedures and, and and when should they have them done so patients are good candidate when they feel that the aging is is unacceptable and and, and they have realistic expectations and they're medically in good shape uh, then they can have these procedure done. Um, it's under anesthesia, it takes about half a day, uh, takes about three, four weeks to recover. So certainly these are a lot more dramatic than the pictures that you show with no cutting, but still there's a place for both. So right. I, the, the question is now the expectations. You want to have the right expectations. And we, we can always talk about healing, recovery, and downtime. And these procedures will take longer time. They will take three, four weeks, sometimes a little longer, where the other ones will take a few days, and the patient would do fine. So it's kind of nice that you have now in, in this menu of services, it looks like people have options that weren't there years ago where you could do something minimal for now maintain for a year or two until maybe you're ready to take right. the next step yes there's a lot of options there i see right so you not only this you can do a face and a neck lift and then you can come back and do a laser and do a peel uh, and and these work very well I, I wanted to share with you also another uh topic that that would be important um uh, and that would be You asked me about treatment of the skin, right? Yes. And, and these are all non-surgical uh, uh, treatments uh, with a cream. Uh, oh, excuse me, here the patient had the lip lift, uh, but the dark circle has been improved, so are the brown pigmentation. Um, here are some patients who have improvement to the surface of the skin. She also had a facelift. So this combination of skin improvement with the cream, with the DMMD that I told you before, as well as the face and the neck lift. You can see the incisions are hidden in here. Um, here are some uh, examples of dark pigmentation that I wanted to bring up. These patients, you see many people around us, some of us too, they have more brown in some areas of the face, the melasma, and by using the cream with the two treatment two weeks apart, the patient has much improvement in those, those dark areas. So we started uh, several years ago uh, with few thousand patients we've done in between uh, to improve patient's skin. And, and that's where uh, in the past, we used to send them to dermatologists because we couldn't overcome these problems. But now, in many cases, we tell patients, I can help you 20 to 30% improvement to the surface of the skin. If they're willing to go through this, we can take them through a treatment of the skin with a DMMD. So here's an example of uh, melasma, which is severe. And um, we have patients uh, with a... surface of skin, surface irregularities, large pores, sun damage, brown pigmentation. So I, I did cover that area. Uh, there's hardly any healing or recovery or downtime with this, unlike the face and the neck lift that there are more. Uh, so these patients enjoy results for many years by using the cream.
And you designed it, Dr. Mann. Yes. Now we do have, yes. And we do have patients with a lot of skin breakouts and that also helps them to overcome this. Many of them have been on antibiotics and we use just the skin cream to help them uh, to overcome this. So here we have a patient who works in a not far away mall with a lot of redness to the face. And every time she, she would get upset, it would be more red and we can help her with the creams to overcome the skin redness, the rosacea, it's called the rosacea. So here's- Oh my goodness, that's amazing. Yes, so uh, the, the ones that I was very afraid to offer a treatment years ago was dark skin because we as plastic surgeons, we don't like to deal with dark skin to change it because it's complicated skin. But we found out that the DMMD is helping patients skin look a lot better. Their brown is becoming less brown, the dark spots are less noticeable. And every time I see a patient with a dark skin that, they, that I could help, I'd be delighted to use that cream. It does have a bleaching component, but it's a very stabilized method and uh, help the patients uh, look and feel better about themselves. So here's some dark skin that is being helped. Um, and uh, you could see improvement uh, to uh, these uh, patients. So, Dr. Mann, just a question because I'm looking at um, the skin and, and, and because we live in South Florida, it's a very multicultural environment. My, my own family's multicultural. Yes. And, and I've seen some of the, the, just the frustration the family members and people have had trying to address this ethnic skin. Um, do you think that there's an underlying autoimmune component to these things? Because I notice when they're under times of stress, that's when it does seem to, to be at its worst. And it seems like you got a solution here. Certainly the ones with rosacea, um, they get very upset very easily or they drink alcohol. It's a problem. Um, and, 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 and the redness get, gets worse at times. Sometimes they, they miss uh, time at work. Uh, so, so there's a, certainly a component of autoimmune. Yes, I think there is. I, I wanted to touch on a, one more topic. Okay. Uh, uh, how about breast tissue in men? Is that an interesting topic? Absolutely. Larry Heisler was asking what other procedures you do. Larry will be here for at least till tomorrow because he's got many he does, but this is awesome. Because I think, especially in men who have uh, enlarged breasts, it is important to give them a good results where they take away the bottom portion, the heavy portion of the breast, and give them a treatment for gynecomastia. Sometimes they're shy going up to the uh, swimming pool or beach, and, and when they have this result, they, they feel so much better about them. So this could be a mild case, there could be a, uh, a mild case, there could be a, a moderate case, and there could be also some severe cases where patients have a, a lot of sagging of the skin and you could uh, remove the breast tissue and suction and do some uplift and maybe you go back in and do revision on them to make it look better. So it, the degree of severity is, is so uh, different in, in these patients and this combination of fat and breast tissue and there's no person better than you doing a manual lymphatic drainage for these patients to get even better results when they recover. Pressure and, and massage helps very well. Dr. Mann, what, what contributes to this feminization, it almost seems, of the male breast to, to that extent? It is not very clear what does it, uh, but we think that hormones in the food could be eating some hormones in chickens or uh, 
in, in some ways uh, improves um, um, and maybe it, it, it causes damage to the tissue with the, uh, the level of uh, estrogen given to uh, uh, the food that we eat. So sometimes I find that the uh, high number over 50% is alarming. So we do see quite a number of patients with this severity. But once the procedure is done, they, they probably don't need to have it done again once it's... No, they, they, they recover from this and, and they do very well. This patient is only a couple, maybe a few weeks after the procedure. There's a little place where the drain was. So I would say it's about two and a half uh, weeks after the procedure with a fat reduction. And, and he doesn't have to worry about it. It usually doesn't come back. Uh, but it can, there's no guarantee. So here's some more examples of uh, heaviness, severity, and decrease of it over time. So this, these patients are very happy uh, with these procedures. They, they, they become more masculine, they become more comfortable. And um, so these are procedures that I wanted to bring up, gynecomastia. I wanted also another procedure to bring up that, that could be of uh, important, and um, that would be uh, rhinoplasty. Yes. And um, I thought that that would be interesting. So many patients are coming in with a large nose and we want them to look natural. We don't want them to look like they had surgery and on the long run, uh, the, that's called the dorsum should be better, the tip should be in better position and maybe use a little bit fillers at the same time, improve the lips a little bit at the same time. So that procedure takes about two hours to do and uh, they have, uh, wonderful um, experience as these results are usually last lifetime. Um, some more example men also do that and you could see um, a mild uh, really uh, improvement over the dorsum but it bothered him so much and the nose was too long for him so with a small incision at the bottom uh, this man would have a better nose and um, and I'll show you a couple more results of a large dorsum. You see the natural looking appearing a nose with a tip in better position, lowering the dorsum. So what, what I wanted to mention here that when we do procedure, we want it to look as natural as possible. And it, it, it doesn't matter if it's in the forehead, the nose, the face, the neck, the breast, or body for that matter. So I wanted to thank you for these questions. And there is always a place to come back and we all learn together about these topics. So uh, did I cover what you wanted to hear? You did, Dr. Mann. We, we are gonna open it up for some questions in a moment. Yeah. Um, but I had two more things I wanted to ask you. Yes. Um, have you ever heard of a procedure called pinning the ears back? Yes, yes, that, that's a autoplasty. And um, we do have um, uh, a, usually children who come at age of four or five is the best time to do it before they start going to school. But even older than that, uh, I did have uh, somebody, I wasn't prepared today to show you pictures of that. Um, uh, but I, I do have uh, these, um, maybe next time when we have it, um, I can share with you uh, some. Um, a excellent pinning of the ears, uh, good for, especially men, when they swim, um, 
uh, women when they swim they, or uh, when they do sports, it bothers them and they want them uh, to be uh, looking more natural. Um, I did want to mention uh, some other interesting procedures, skin rejuvenation peel for deep peel for patients who have a lot of wrinkling. And, yes. and you could see improvement uh, to the face and the neck by doing a deep peel on them. Um, it's a procedure that takes about one week to heal with us and about a one week at home. So skin rejuvenation peel is very good uh, for patients who have a lot of deep wrinkling. And, but today we can do these procedures also as an outpatient on the local with a little bit small amount of Versed and ketamine and also improve their skin and use also a little bit fillers um, so they can, uh, after a couple of hours, go home and do also fine. You know, Dr. Mann, I want to mention to them and for everyone that will be listening to the show later is that um, you may not be familiar with Dr. Mann's facility, but he actually owns his OR. He, that's your facility, your own OR. And underneath the facility is also his state-of-the-art recovery suites, which would rival any Marriott hotel. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm still trying to move in downstairs from Dr. Mann because it's beautiful. And you have uh, nursing staff for those to stay right there on premises as they recover. Do you want to tell them more about it, Dr. Mann? I, I think it's very important that the patients have a, a good time uh, to heal. Uh, so uh, since we do talk about healing, recovery, and downtime, one of the things we do offer patients is overnight stay, and sometimes they can stay a few more days to recover. It is very important for them so they, they're not seen at the worst with their friends or family. And sometimes they get this even negative things. You mean, and you, you look like this so, so bad and you even had to pay for this? So it's better for them for the first few days, if possible, for them to stay with us. And, and, and we offer that to, to, to these patients. Yeah. And you also, he, just by the way, too, he, I know that he has organic foods brought in um, right down the street from a place where most of us love to eat. Right. <laughs> so they, they really have quite the experience, 360. And I love that because he pays attention to the details. It's not just having a surgery done. It's on my side, Dr. Mann, as a therapist, I've been surprised at how many people will undergo a procedure and not bring or tell a loved one that they're doing something because they don't want them to know, but they need a little assistance for a day or two. Right. So I'm, I'm glad you provide them that avenue. I, I wanted to share with you a little bit since I, I do the sculptures and they're made of clay and then bronze. What I, I always think of if, the top, if facial enhancement can be done with no done times, we talk about the neuromodulators like Botox, Xeomine, or, or Dysport, and also uh, fillers to the face. So we do mention a few of them. And um, I wanted to bring a couple more uh, examples of uh, patients uh, that what we do for them. Uh, fillers to the lips are very important. Um, uh, one time I, I did paint Madonna, uh, you can see on the left side, and I always think of if we do use lip fillers, they should be natural hyaluronic acid, uh, plumper, but not uh, overly aggressive, not make them too large. Uh, I have done this patient uh, fillers and uh, laser resurfacing and then painted her. Uh, and sometimes you could use also a lip lift in a situation where the lip is too much sagging. So uh, remember some of the, the lips are too long and covering the upper teeth. Uh, we could do lip lifts on them. We could do also dermabrasion sanding around the mouth area and uh, the peels of course. Uh, so here's example of fillers to the lips. Um, 
by using volume building to the upper lip and lower lip. Remember that the lower lip has a little bit more volume than the upper lip. And here are some examples of lips fillers and uh, jaw enhancement uh, by doing uh, her facelift as well as some uh, fillers and improvement uh, to the lips and nasolabial fold, uh, more volume to the upper lip and lower lip. And here is an example of a lip lip. The incision would be around at the base of the nose and you could see immediate results afterwards. Of course, these patients will have swelling will look um, though much better when uh, all the suture line has healed well. And uh, you could see that you don't see the suture line in this case, you could see it looks better. She also had a appeal to the entire skin of the face uh, at the same time. So here is the lip lift together with a peel together with her own fat mm -hmm. and lip lift. Um, Lip lift together with a skin rejuvenation peel. So I thought maybe this is a good time to um, ask some questions. If you uh, want to know about healing, recovery, or additional questions, you as therapists are, are a key uh, to this success because the lymphatic drainage, I, I think, is a keystone uh, to decrease swelling and get better recovery. So Dr. Mann, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open it up here and unmute everybody. That way they can ask you some questions. So guys, um, let's go ahead and take one by one and, and, and let's ask Dr. Mann those questions. I saw you chatting in there. I want to ask them. Yes. So, Dr. Mann, what would you say is the number one, two, and three um, procedures that you do? What's the most popular? What if, what if, or something as a, as a massage therapist that does MLD, I know that we're going to be treating uh, the face an awful lot. What, what do you would say is you, your, your most, you know, that people are getting the most of? The most I see for patients who come the first time would be Botox or Xeomine or, or, or Dysport. These are neurotoxins and fillers and the light peels to the face. Um, uh, and that would go along um, uh, for um, a period of time until they find that they have more aging and then they want to do maybe upper eyelid blepoplasty and maybe they want to do a face and a neck lift. And uh, if, if they're younger, they may want to do a nose operation. And uh, the same patients also are coming for other things like breast augmentation, breast reduction, tummy tucks. So um, I think there are no three things that can be done. But if you would say, what are the things that are mostly done would be uh, faces, body, hair transplant um, would be the, the ones that we can concentrate on. But I, I didn't have time to go into all of them, but I thought that that, that was a good question. Dr. Mann, your work is, is stunning, so, so beautiful. And, and your artwork is, is also so stunning and beautiful. I know it's, it's a science, but you've turned it into an art form. Uh, and and that's just amazing. Just so everyone knows, I know he's very humble, but his his artwork actually hangs in the White House, and others of it are walking, actually walking forms of art as well. Yes. That, that man's art is everywhere. Dr. Mann, for the therapist, is there anything you would say in the recovery of the patient that we should be aware of when they're in the recovery phase? Because I don't know that everybody actually reads all the details of what recovery looks like. So what would you what would you share with the therapist? What should we be looking for and you know, just anything that might be a red flag that we should know about? Well, when when you have somebody who had 
let's say a tummy tuck. And uh, maybe when, when you put your hand on the belly and you feel some swelling and maybe it's not the regular swelling that you experience, but maybe shifting of fluid. That could be seroma, fluid collection. It does need attention. It doesn't happen necessarily the first day or two. It can be even a month later, within the period of month or even longer than that. And the same applies uh, to other parts, like if suction was done and the fluid collection, it needs attention. So if you can ask the patient to go, come back uh, to the, the surgeon that work uh, on the patient and say, you know, uh, may, maybe you, you need them to see something uh, here and uh, make a phone call in, um, to the clinic and ask also the doctor to give you a call uh, beforehand or afterwards so they pay attention to this. Um, and, and they also will value your work. Uh, the other thing is when you do the lymphatic drainage, uh, think of how much the patients feel more comfortable when you touch them and you do it the right way. Look at the other alternative. When they don't do it, they do have more swelling, takes longer time uh, to feel more comfortable, and uh, they will value very much your work. Look for red, red areas, like inflammation could be a sign of infection. Uh, the tension, sometimes they can develop something that's called cellulitis uh, or a mild case of infection. They need the attention to them. There could be some kind of infection that is more common, like a, in, in Florida, like a, a typical mycobacteria. We had periods of time that we saw more of it. Um, and they did need special antibiotics for a long time. Um, I think that uh, if you give them instructions to rest with the legs elevated, to decrease swelling to the legs, uh, to use the silk stockings or the other ones uh, that you like, uh, Lisa, uh, to uh, prevent fluid from accumulating in the lower extremities. Because lower extremities are so difficult when you do suction into these areas, or even higher than that, swelling builds up in the lower extremities. And uh, there are no people, uh, not, not like you know so much about it, but lower extremity fills up with more swelling than other parts of the body. Yeah, the gravity just, gravity wants to pull it down and with the lack of activity because they're not, you know, they're not up and doing aerobics the first day. Um, yeah, we, I know that it wants to accumulate there and that's where hopefully we're, we're helping you surgeons to be able to get that patient back up on their feet and without that limp sitting there so long that, you know, for yeah. some, I've seen it turn into the infection cellulitis if it's sitting there for too long. So if we can help them that way and minimize that discomfort that comes with it, um, there's a lot of thank yous. And then of course, then seeing the tissues come together and everything because the deed is not just sitting up under the scar. Yes. Um, in fact, Dr. Mann, I'm gonna bring my nose up to the camera really close. Yes. Because my nose was cut in half, completely in half. Okay, okay. From skin cancer. So yes. they did the Mohs procedure on me eight hours at Memorial Hospital West. They did nice work. Well, it, they did. It was a really excellent surgeon um, and he wasn't really familiar with lymphatic drainage for, for this procedure. He had heard of it for lymphedema, but he allowed me to do it. And as close as I can get, you, you can barely see a scar. Yeah, that's right. So I know he was really thrilled for that kind of result because of all the most procedures. That's that's what he does there in that particular hospital. So hopefully this this joining together, we're seeing more and more. We're seeing more and more of the plastic surgeons reaching out 
for the MLD certified therapist. Is there anything you feel that's been going on maybe that we're not aware of? Is there discussion at the convention levels or how is that information getting out? Specifically about your nose, that he chose the incision in the midline is very smart because incision in the midline of the nose heals very well. So he did the right thing for you. It's very important to choose the right uh, incision for different situations uh, so the scar would be the best and it will heal the best way. Wow. Yeah, I was very grateful because, again, it's your face and you want to be in good hands. And I, I, I'll give you the rest of my face, but cancer free. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> cancer free. So does anyone else have a question also for Dr. Mann? You know, I want you to reach out to us at uh, uh, drmann.com with questions of 561-395-5508 if you have some questions or book for consultation. And for you, I, I counted about whatever, close to 30 people, right? Yes. So it would be a free, a free consultation and we do something special for you when you come over to our facility. I value very much for having manual lymphatic uh, drainage uh, experts uh, train and work with Lisa. That's uh, uh, wonderful that we can work together and I, I hope to make uh, more of these communications with you. I, I like to hear about your meetings and join whenever possible because I, I learn from you uh, very much. And we learn a lot from you, Dr. Mann. Thank you for allowing us to have that time um, in the OR. And, you know, we've been sharing that with our therapist. You know, everyone, I want you to know it's his OR that you see in the head, neck, and face yeah. class. And without all that information so close up and personal, it, it gives us a confidence when we're going to put our hands on someone to want to help them. Um, Dr. Mann, one last question for you before you go. Yes. As a surgeon, of the whole process from the beginning of that patient comes through your door, then they go through the procedure, and then they go through recovery. What part of that procedure is the most difficult for you? Every time that I do a procedure, I think of it as my first procedure that I do. And I think that the responsibility that I have is huge. So I think of it, what can I do to make this one as successful as possible? Uh, to make sure that I thought about everything and what can I do to make things better? Because uh, frequently there are a lot of challenges and you have to overcome this. Um, I want to make sure that the patient uh, is the right patient, they have the right expectations, and that we prepared everything, uh, including in the operating room, that the uh, OR uh, bed is warm, and uh, the patient is uh, comfortable, that the blood pressure is controlled, and uh, that the patient will have the best recovery and they will not have much pain. Uh, so a lot of things going in the mind and uh, hopefully that they'll have a great success story afterwards. And, and that's what uh, keeps us uh, on our toes. And you have, you see, I tell you what, we just scratched the surface tonight, everyone. So just be prepared. We're gonna hear from Dr. Mann again because he has even more secrets to share with us. Um, some things we, we talked about, saw in the OR that make it different than anything we've ever seen, but that would have to be another, another time because, um, by the way, I was going to say, you could write the book on him, but you know what? He already did. It's called The Art of Man. So Dr. Mann, do you want to tell about your book? I, I wrote the, uh, thank you, Lisa. I, I wrote the book for patients uh, describing some of my experience in the past, usually questions that they had, different kind of uh, operation, different kind of problems that we were able to solve together, 
I, ha I help women in uh, domestic abuse, uh, so I reach out to them and, and do help them when they suffer. So I do um, have different backgrounds, and together with the art, I, I thought that uh, it works together, that you could show how uh, the art and science work together, and the experience of doing it for years brought me to write a book and then another book for patients. Uh, and so that's that that's important uh, part of me every day thinking of what to do better and one of these uh, ways of doing it is putting it in writing in the book that I did. So we can still purchase it. Uh, we, we can get you a copy of a book or we can direct you. It's out of print, unfortunately, now the book, but I would uh, I urge you to come to the office or write to me. I'll answer each one of you when you reach to me about some questions. And if, if sometimes you do find in your line of work, you had questions about uh, something that is related to dwelling, irregularity or things of that nature. I'll be, I love to try to help you. I, I would not say anything bad about another doctor. I would try only to help because we are in the same boat. We want to help people. We want, don't want to criticize, but we want to help people who run into some kind of questions or problems and resolve it. And because nobody is free from problems. We all try to resolve problems. Dr. Mann, would you mind if we shared your email address with our viewers? Because they're asking how they can reach you. Info at drman.com. Info at drman.com. That goes directly to our office, and I'll answer uh, questions there, or um, drdanielman, gmail.com, that's my personal email, drdanielman, at gmail.com. Wonderful. So we thank you so much for your, your valuable time here, Doc, and we, I know you have an audience that's just captivated by the work you've done through the years and what you've got planned already. I know, like I said, again, this was just touching the surface, everyone, but now you have Dr. Mann's information where when you come up to those questions, um, need a little help, maybe friend or family looking for help making these decisions. You've got Dr. Mann, Dr. Boca, we call him. <laughs> right here. So thank you so much, Dr. Mann, tonight. Thank Lisa so much for doing this work. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Mann and Lisa. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome, Chris. Thank you so much. I really enjoyed it. Good. Thank You're you, Monique. Welcome. Thank you, Monique. You're welcome. That was great, Thank Doc. You. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Who was that, Joey? No, it was Larry. Ah, Larry. Good, good. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank and you. thank you, Dr. Mann. Heisler and his wife. Nice. Yes, Kathy. Hi, Kathy. Hi, Dr. Mann. <laughs> Hi.